Hello everyone, this is SG DeVries, and today I am taking a break from my palette build of my bulldozer model to actually do a bandsaw review. If you're into woodworking, you've probably heard of the Rikon brand. Now, I am not endorsing Rikon as a brand. I have never spoken to them, they have never contacted me, and they certainly haven't given me anything to say anything good about them. So I'm here just to do an honest review and to tell you why I picked this saw uh, over some other ones. Speed of fence guide. This is the table. Looks like it has lots and lots of grease on it. The sort of standard cheap fence that you get with any bandsaw of this size, they're never really very good. But we'll take a look at it and see how it goes. I'll probably. Let's zoom in on the saw a little bit. I'll show you a couple of the features of it and the setup. First off, the table is very heavy. It's very solid. The mounting system on the back, I don't know if you can see the trunnion that's under there. I actually felt, uh, flimsy is not the right word. I felt it should really have been a little bit sturdier built for the weight and the heaviness of the table. Now that being said, I mean, it's solid, it's not moving at all, so it is holding it firmly. Um, the other thing I was disappointed with the trunnion system was that it's basically a loosen it up and guess. There isn't a rack and pinion system on this. Even my old saw, the, the little 9 inch Protec that you just saw, has a rack and pinion gear on there to do detailed adjustments. Now this saw, besides the trunnion, does have a bolt under there that you can adjust as a stop to where to stop the tilt, and I was able to get a very, very accurate setup on the table using that. I guess I was just hoping that there would be a rack and pinion to make it, you know, a little bit easier on me. Now that I have the table set to perfectly perpendicular to the blade, I don't plan on ever changing it. If I need to cut something at an angle, I'll use a block of wood or a riser block underneath the piece of wood rather than tilting the table. It's pretty solidly built. You can see lots of reviews that'll talk to you about that. Um, the steel construction. Still, it's got a good amount of resaw capability, a good amount of height. Now, quite honestly, you should never use a saw like this to resaw something six inches thick. You're going to be disappointed. The reason I wanted the extra clearance was not because of that, but it's because I work on toys and sometimes I need to fit large portions of the toy underneath the saw if I'm building a prototype to slice something off. And so I like having that extra clearance. The thickest I would ever consider resawing in something like this is maybe two, two and a half inches. It was fairly easy to set up. The table was a little bit difficult to, to get the screws in, but once I got them in, it was fine, and tensioning the blade was fine. Setting up the uh, bearing guides was you know, pretty much what you'd expect. They've got hex bolts that loosen them up, and you kind of have to hold them in place with one finger while you tighten it back up, because saws like this, the guides tend to move a little as you tighten the screw. That's not something unique to this machine. I have found that on every small bandsaw. Um, that being said, the assembly under here that holds the bearing guides and the thrust bearing does seem very solidly built. It's a nice thick piece of machined aluminum. There is one problem I found though. Let me open up the top and let me loosen up this. You know, most saws will have this rack and pinion system that lower this up and down, and this one does too. It moves nice and smoothly, but I have found that this is not actually perfectly parallel to the blade. If I go from all the way to the top, you know, up here, to all the way down to the bottom, 
I probably have the 32nd of an inch difference where it's actually sliding over just a little bit. That this bearing is closer to the blade at the bottom than it is at the top. Now I double checked my guides at the bottom just to make sure it's not touching down there and it isn't. So it's not being deflected, the blade's not being deflected by anything, but this is not perfectly parallel to the blade. Uh, I tried adjusting it using these screws which attach the uh, which attach to this piece to keep it from coming off. I may call the manufacturer to see if there's some adjustment that I can do that I don't know about. But to be perfectly honest, that distance is not killing me. That uh, that variation. Um, if the blade is tensioned right, you shouldn't be needing those side guys anyway. And I can usually tell if I'm deflecting off of what I, my line of cut before it ever touches the guys anyway. I try to try to run my guides as close as possible without touching. But uh, I may end up having to do a little extra adjustment if I if I shift often from you know low to high. But I don't really anticipate that too much. I sh I generally you know I know you're supposed to run these things as close to the wood as possible. I find that I usually sort of set it to around there and leave it because I can cut you know 90% of the stuff I need without ever changing it and then I just set the guides appropriately. Let's uh, tighten this thing back up. You know there's the standard ruler thing on here which I never use. When I'm measuring a distance I am always measuring directly from the fence to the blade with a little square. Now this uh, does come with a fence. It's kind of the generic snap-on fence that you see on every saw of this type. You're not going to get a really good you know, precision bandsaw fence unless you start getting into the thousands of dollars range for your saw. You know, if you spend a thousand dollars for a Laguna or a or the 14 inch or Rikon Deluxe, you'll get a nicer fence than this. That being said, I was a little skeptical when I saw it. However, it does move nice and smooth and it does you know, fit right up there, right to the blade. So there's that little bit of wobble which adjusts the tilt, and I don't really care for that. Um, I will probably end up building my own fence. Now it will come up, and it will, you know, it'll lock in nice and tight, and it'll stay there. You can use it. Um, I just happen to like things that are a little bit more precise, and so I plan on building my own fence. But if you're looking at buying a bandsaw, you're not going to find a better fence on the 10 inch line of bandsaws. Now right now I have the blade that came with it that's on there. I assume that that blade is sort of mediocre. So I do have a Sterrett blade that I'm going to put on here, a half inch thick one, or a half inch deep blade. And we'll put that on later. So let's try some sawing. Before I actually get to cutting, I will say this may be the only tool I have ever purchased where the dust collection port fits perfectly onto the connection that I have. I didn't need to use electrical tape or some sort of weird finagle contraption to get the thing to fit right. So hey, that's a bonus. You can see in the table there is a little plastic thing here. Um, I will soon be removing that and putting in a zero clearance insert because I happen to like zero clearance inserts. In fact, I might be building a whole table overlay like I did with my other table saw that has some uh, T-tracks, some T-tracks built into it and miter gauges on each side because I tend to find that I'm left-handed. I tend to work on this side with my miter gauge wanting to push things through rather than this side. First, let's cut with the blade that came on the saw and then we'll change the blades, see how easy that is or see how diff easy or difficult. And then we'll try to do a little bit of resawing. Start out with really high quality wood. Now the lack of a miter gauge is somewhat of a problem. You would think on a saw like this, they could at least give you the cheap miter gauge. I don't have a miter gauge that'll fit this track right now. Um, I'll probably end up building that too. Factory blade cut better than I expected. There we go. All right. I 
can tell already that this little blade protection guy here is annoying. Especially this little loose piece right here. After my warranty runs out, I'll probably take that off. Big box, small blade. Good. Tension looks good. Moment of truth. Plug it in first. Now the moment of truth. All right. We'll give it a shot. table is perpendicular. It's the fence that doesn't always lock perpendicular. Nice and straight, but we're gonna find out for sure. Now, maybe if I held it up here, you can actually see what I'm doing. Three, two, six, five, turn over. So that's about one one hundredth difference there. So it looks like, you know, from top to bottom, side to side, I've got variations of less than a hundredth, which there's a lot for some people, but for me it's fine. I have a thickness sander that I can go down to the half a thousandth. And this board actually looks a little warped to begin with. So, way better blade, way better quality. All right, so my general impressions. Um, the blade that came with it was great for cross cutting or, you know, if you're building some outdoor furniture, it would work fine. It's only a quarter of an inch, it wasn't that thick. I put a half inch blade on it, and even that, that blade isn't doesn't specifically say for resawing. It resawed very well, and I'm happy with that. You know, all in all, I'm happy with the purchase. I think it was worth the money. Um, it was certainly going to be way better than my previous saw for doing sawing some thicker stuff, which is what I wanted it for anyway. Uh, I would have liked to have gotten straight up to the 14 inch saw, but quite frankly, the price difference between 210 for this saw. And the you know eight to nine hundred that you're going to spend on a good quality 14 inch bandsaw, you know, it was too much for me. I would have gone for it, but it's, just, it's the price difference. So this is the Rikon model 10-305. After using it for a couple weeks now, I've been very happy with it. I've got no complaints at all. Um, it's a good quality machine. Uh, the issue with the upper blade guides that I had mentioned about the slight misalignment hasn't turned out to be an issue really at all anyway. Uh, it hasn't affected me in the slightest. Uh, whenever I change blades I have to reset the guides anyway. So I am very happy with it. Thanks for watching.